Welcome back to Central Coast Radio. I'm your host, Kyle, and I'm joined right now in the studio by Harley. Say hello, Harley. Hello, Harley. <laughs> and um, we're about to talk about the, the latest raunchy comedy called No Hard Feelings. It's getting a wide release at the moment. Oh, That sounds like an innuendo, uh, the... but uh, yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> I think it is. I think it's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty blatant one. Um, well, uh, Montauk is a sleepy little beachside hamlet in New York, and it's the perfect place to catch a wave or relax. And at least it used to be for local barmaid and Uber driver Maddie, played by Jennifer Lawrence here. Uh, that was until rich summer vacationers moved in and jacked up all the tax rates. Now, because of this, Maddie has fallen behind in payments and faces bankruptcy after the repossession of a car, which was basically her livelihood. Luckily for her, the perfect opportunity has just appeared on Craigslist, which is a wealthy couple, uh, Laird, played by Matthew Broderick, and Allison, played by Laura Bernardi. They have a curious little problem that they want taken care of, which is their 19-year-old introverted son named Percy, played by Andrew Barth Feldman. He doesn't drink, he doesn't drive, he hasn't got any real friends, and he's altogether really inexperienced in life. And with Percy shipping off to Princeton University soon, the parents think that it's best if somebody quote unquote date him in the uh the fullest sense of the word um uh, yeah date if, yeah if, that's the word <laughs> date, date, exactly yeah and uh well if maddie can help percy out get out of his shell then she'll be rewarded with a new car which would solve all of her problems and now maddie's a grown woman she hasn't got any hang-ups on sleeping with a man for personal gain and it wouldn't even be her first time so how difficult could it be extremely as the more forward her approach the more percy recoils and this is a relationship that's going to take a bit more of a softer touch and one which will force maddie to come to terms with her own issues with personal intimacy and as she grows to legitimately care for Percy, she realizes that maybe he's not the only one that needs a little help leaving the nest. Now, Harley, what did you think of No Hard Feelings? I was about to give our parody title that we just came <laughs> up with off air. Yes, um, let's, let's, let's keep that one going. Um... <laughs> let's keep that one private. What did you think of uh, No Hard Feelings? Because it's, it's kind of rare nowadays that you see uh like raunchy sex comedies or even like mainstream main release r-rated comedies at all yeah um i i thought it was a, a nice change of pace actually i mean I, I guess a lot of the stuff we've sort of had to watch lately has been with um superheroes and big budget kind of mm. actions and stuff like that so this was just a nice change um and you know what Really funny. I, I expected it could have ended up really bad, but I was looking forward to it from the trailers, and it didn't disappoint. And even on the dr dramatic side of the story, I did like that parallel between Maddie and Percy's kind of past traumas and how they paralleled really well, but they're kind of the polar opposites. Maddie going all out to be, you know, get with any guy she can pretty much until they say, I yeah. love you. And then just like, Whoop, run the other way. Whereas she Percy has yeah. just become completely insular and his only friends are online. And, you know, his idea of what he wants is the, the slow going on a date, not jumping straight into bed, which you expect, you know, a, a 19 year old guy to probably just want to do that, especially for, you know, sexy woman yeah. comes up to win, throwing herself at him. I think, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's like this is, he's the only guy that, that doesn't want to sleep with the provocative Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the only straight guy that wouldn't want to sleep with Jennifer Lawrence. And like, the, look, the situation yeah. is funny. Just the, the awkwardness that arises out of her advances towards this guy who 
is just so unexpectedly looking for the the opposite kind of thing. But mm. things escalate between them. Every time they get together, something goes quite wrong. And, you know, her kind of straightforward plan is never going to go straightforward because of this. But just mm. the fact that they are in the same space as each other, something goes wrong. And I, I kind of mm. love that. Um, a very interesting scene on the beach where uh, they go skinny dipping after an incident that yeah. was almost lethal to one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think it's, it's the uh, best, best nude fight scene since Eastern Promises, I think. So yeah. <laughs> definitely something that people are going to be talking about with this movie. I, I think they could just um, paint Jennifer Lawrence up and reuse that footage in a new X-Men movie. Just, you know, <laughs> go back to playing Mystique. I, I, I would just love to see that somehow. <laughs> Just Photoshop, yeah, just Photoshop a blue and say, oh, yeah, it's a new X Men movie. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not sure who the other characters would be, but I'm sure we can special effects some costumes onto them or something. Someone, <laughs> they throw, the throwaway mutants that were in the third X Men movie. That's <laughs> the whole movie so was throwaway. What are you talking about? <laughs> I, so, see, this this is the problem with having so many superhero movies. Now, when talking about a movie that's not a superhero movie, we're still talking about superhero yeah, movies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Especially <laughs> just with Jennifer Lawrence being so kind of known for a particular character, mm. it, it does make it hard. Speaking of being known for a particular character, Matthew Broderick. I mean, yeah. I, yeah, he, I, very... I almost didn't recognize him. It's <laughs> just like, wait, yeah. what? He... He aged. He he changed that much. Like when did that happen? <laughs> I I was still he, he, used to still seeing Ferris like a, Bueller, an, right? an older Ferris Bueller, but like no, he's yeah. he's got long gray hair and playing this yeah. really. Yes. It, it actually the the father is almost you know he he plays Percy's father. So so Led is almost mm. like a um Ferris Bueller grown up like. It's a bit irresponsible yeah. what they're trying to do is, you know, get their son laid so he's Pretty much, out of his yeah. shell for, for college. And it it could almost be a sequel, Ferris Bueller settles down. <laughs> um yeah, it's an it's interesting like, yeah, note on trying to open like, up, open up these his days. son's horizons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that the helicopter parenting where it it's not that they want to protect him, it's just yeah, it, it's it's We'll, I mean, we'll structure events like in his a, life a so that he's prepared for way. everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like they know that it'd be better for him to to actually experience some of some of life before basically going to Princeton and focusing on on that kind that aspect of life. So I know it's like you can you can empathize with them, especially with how uh how uh introverted percy is but yeah it, it is it is kind of a messed up thing what they're doing yeah and, and, and it's not only yeah, them the, the, because the, there's there's other holiday parents there so um you know yeah. they, they turn up to a, a party for other students who are going to princeton and um yeah all, all these kids are there in the house they've they've got alcohol somewhere in bedrooms yeah. alone together although hardly anything uh, are doing anything untoward they're just like was, sitting was, on like, was, the computers and stuff yeah. it was like what the hell <laughs> and but, she, like, but then she, it turns out the parents are there in. the whole time and it's like wait yeah. you're here while your kids are having a huge house that. party like, like what <laughs> she walks in trying to she walks in like she's like boss bitch kind of. Get, I like that that in this movie, even when Jennifer Lawrence's character was kind of like bitchy or like king bitch, yeah, she was still likable. Yeah, this, which is some, uh, something that I, yeah, I th I think that kind like the last few movies that she's been in, she she's kind of gotten away from that. And at one point, she was like a darling of Hollywood, like everybody loved her, and she and she seemed very down to earth. But I think that's something that. The filmmakers that she's worked with in the last few years have kind of it's kind of dropped off a little and this was the first time that i really uh yeah i kind of really liked her in a movie just kind of felt that she was 
yeah, kind of a lot more relatable in a person. Yeah, it, like it, it's not, funny. Like it's, she was kind of made up to be like, you know, not a great character with moral guidance, but mm. she was so likable. Like you got on board with her story, in, in somehow yeah. just I think because of the interaction between Maddie and Percy, like even though she's just mm, trying mm. to seduce him for a quick payoff kind of thing, it, it, I, because you totally see these moments between them where it's kind of like, oh, okay, it's it's not like a sleazy thing. She actually does seem to show concern here and there, and even though things get kind of heated and you think, oh, God, one of them's going to kill the other or cause problems for the other yeah. it, it's it always um <laughs> trails <the> off <laughs> in, in a nice kind of way it, it's very strange yeah yeah, she, yeah. <laughs> he maces her in the eye like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then hoses her off and then it's sort of like no i, I want to do things different like go on a date and she's like oh all right let me go and change my dress and it's like no maybe tomorrow <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh. Uh, I know I really did like the comedy in this as well, as you say. I like um have you seen uh the the film that the director this Gene Stepanitsky did before? He did one called Good Boys. It was I uh, know was, about it, but I can't yeah. I don't think I've seen it. It keeps coming I up and I keep was, thinking like because I know the yeah. name, but I can't I don't think I saw it. It was one kind of, it was kind of like a South Park kind of one or early South Park where they were kids, but getting into really like adult situations. Yeah. And like, there was just that aspect of innocence to it, but just this ridiculous stuff that these, that these little kids were getting into. And I really enjoyed that. And I think that's actually to go back to the, uh, like adult orientated comedies. That's probably one of the, the last adult orientated comedies that has been like a mainstream release. And that was, that was a good four years ago or something. I know COVID and all, but yeah, yeah it's just, it, it's kind of like a long time since, um, since we've had the Seth Rogen comedies and the, uh, you know, the Will Ferrell comedies and, and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. We, yeah, that's true. I, I was I actually just thinking this... about, uh, what was it? The end of the world the other day seth rogan and yeah um, yeah 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 that all one, of that yeah, like yeah. i don't know why that was popping into my head but it was just sort of like the <laughs> the, the the scenes of them like doing an act of goodness sending them into the rapture to go to heaven to be protected from this giant <laughs> devil <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, like yeah it's just I, I i hope that this movie is successful to kind of get back to that because i kind of miss i miss that i missed it when that was i don't know it was like just good fun comedies that come out you know and not i didn't i preferred seeing that every few every few years uh, every few months not a yeah big budget blockbuster superhero film <laughs> yeah or or just something that's kind of like a a safe bet rehash of something that's been done mm. five times in yeah. the same year already anyway so um yeah. I, it, it was a nice change of tone and i guess because it was a bit more risque in the situation it was setting up, like because Maddie is actually 30 and what the parents were looking for was someone yeah. between 20 to 25. And she's just like, <laughs> oh, I'm just slightly out of the age bracket. And they're like, <laughs> oh, how much? Oh, I was 29 last year. And this year, yeah, hmm. I was twenty nine <laughs> last year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so like this that. year, twenty nine plus one. Oh, so you're thirty, thirty two. <laughs> I I like that. I, it's it's probably one of the first movies that I that I've seen that I've I I I, I want to word my I want to choose my, my words carefully here, but one where I've actually been able to look at Jennifer Lawrence as, as a mature character, whereas that was also a problem. I think in some of her earlier movies, some of her serious movies where you looked at her trying to play these like serious characters. And you, I think a lot of people just couldn't help but see her as a little girl playing dress up. Yeah. You know, so seeing her, I mean, it was interesting seeing her in this movie, like playing, even though she's playing this uh, uh, immature childish character, but, 
being able to see her as a more mature actor i think yeah. at the same time uh, like i don't know i just thought yeah it's it's it was just like a uh like an odd choice like i wouldn't have expected oscar winner jennifer lawrence to do a, a raunchy sex comedy but i'm glad that she did because i think she really absolutely makes the movie yeah, yeah. she she's and, so uh, unafraid with... to do all these scenes and you know sometimes exactly. it's like questionable situations you know, she she takes him to a bar, to, <laughs> and he just he asks for Pepsi, and the and the waitress is like, "Oh no, we only serve Coke here." So he's just like, "Oh, I'm fine," and she's like, "No, he, he, he'll have a Long Island iced tea like me." Like, yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. underage. Like, what? <laughs> She's just underage drinking. No problem. No problem. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, so with that, I guess we'll give it our scores. Uh, what are you going to give this out of five, Harley, and why? I, my God, I almost just want to say five because I really enjoyed it so much. Um, but I think I want to say <laughs> four and a half just because there were a couple of things that made me question a little bit of the setting, such as, um, mm. you know, Percy apparently doesn't have any friends in the real world, but when they're out at a restaurant, uh, a girl from his classes runs up to him and they hug like they're best friends and they, they chat like they're best friends. So it's, it did seem a little weird. Like that was, maybe it's just him not sort of realizing that he had people around him. He could reach out to, but it, yeah, it just seemed a bit of a contradiction to what was being set up. So I'll say four and a half. Yeah. All all it takes is being able to play the play uh the play she's a man eater on a piano. Yeah, yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that was actually a really well yeah. done scene, actually. The way they said I know up I really the like that and everything. Scene. Yeah. Yeah. The scene and kind of like you see like her her emotions kind of changing. Like that's when she kind of knows that she's starting to have emotions for this yeah. kid. Yeah. Uh yeah, and that, I'm gonna give this four and a half out of five as well. I, I really enjoyed it too um yeah a lot more i enjoyed it a lot more than i thought i was going to enjoy yeah, it same. and yeah i think the the two leads had great chemistry it's great comp the a very, very witty script and yeah just a a nicely grounded romantic comedy i guess so yeah four and a half out of five from both of us so this movie is currently in a wide release you should be able to see it pretty much anywhere and yeah go check it out we both recommend it Absolutely. You're listening. Yeah. You're listening to centralcoastradio.com and we will be back right after this.